the antiquities of the jews volume one by fravius josephus book three chapters nine through eleven chapter nine the manner of our offering sacrifices i will now however make mention of a few of our laws which belong to purifications and the like sacred offices since i am accidentally come to this matter of sacrifices these sacrifices were of two sorts of those sorts one was offered for private persons and the other for the people in general and they are done in two different ways in the one case what is slain is burnt as a whole burnt offering whence that name is given to it but the other is a thank offering and is designed for feasting those that sacrifice i will speak of the former suppose a private man offer a burnt offering he must pay a pulam or a kid of the goat burnt offering he must pay a pulam or a kid of the goats and the two latter of the first year of bulls he is permitted to sacrifice those of a greater age but all burnt offerings are to be of males when they are slain priests sprinkle the blood round about the altar then cleanse the bodies and divide them into parts and salt them with salt and lay them upon the altar while the pieces of wood are piled one upon another and the fire is burning they next cleanse the feet of the sacrifices and the inwards in an accurate manner lay them to the rest to be purged by the fire while the priests receive the hides this is the way of offering a burnt offering but those that offer thank offerings do indeed sacrifice cheers, but such as are unblemished and above a year old however they may take either males or females they also sprinkle take either males or females they also sprinkle the altar with their blood but they lay upon the altar and the call and all the fat and the lobe of the liver together with the rump of the lamb then giving the breast and the right shoulder to the priests the offerers feast upon the remainder of the flesh for and what remains they burn the sacrifices for sins are offered in the same manner as is the thank offering but those who are unable to purchase complete sacrifices offer two pigeons or turtle doves the one of which is made a burnt offering to god the other they give as food to the priests but we shall treat more accurately about the oblation of these creatures in our discourse concerning sacrifices but if a person fall into sin by ignorance he offers a ewe lamb or a female kid of the goats of the same age and the priests sprinkle the blood at the altar not after the former manner altar not after the former manner but at the corners of it they also bring the kidneys and the rest of the fat together with the lobe of the liver to the altar while the priests bear away the hides and the flesh and spend it in the holy place on the same day for the law does not permit them to leave of it until the morning but if any one sin and is conscious of it himself but hath no body that can prove it upon him he offers a ram the law enjoining him so to do the flesh of which the priests eat as before in the holy place on the same day and if the rulers offer sacrifices for their sins they bring the same oblations that private men do only they so far differ that they are to bring for sacrifices a bull or a kid of the goats both males now the law requires both in private and public sacrifices that the finest flour be also for a lamb the measure of one tenth deal for a ram two and for a bull three these they consecrate upon the altar when it is mingled with oil for oil is also brought by those that sacrifice for a bull the half of a hin and for a ram the third part of the same measure and one quarter of it for a lamb this hin is an ancient hebrew measure and is equivalent to two athenian koas or conduces they bring the same quantity of oil which they do of wine and they pour the wine about the altar but if any one does not offer a complete sacrifice of animals but brings fine flour only for a vow he throws a handful upon the altar as its first fruits while the priests take the rest for their food either boiled or mingled with oil but made into cakes of bread but whatsoever it be that the 
it must of necessity be all burnt now the law forbids us to sacrifice any animal at the same time with its dam and in other cases not till the eighth day after its birth other sacrifices there are also appointed for escaping distempers or for other occasions in which meat offerings are consumed together with the animals that are sacrificed of which it is not lawful to leave any part till the next day only the priests are to take their own share chapter ten concerning the festivals and how each day of such festival is to be observed the law requires that out of the public expenses a lamb of the first year be killed every day at the beginning and at the ending of the day but on the seventh day which is called the sabbath they kill two and sacrifice them in the same manner they kill two and sacrifice them in the same manner at the new moon they both perform the daily sacrifices and slay two bulls with seven lambs of the first year and the kid of the goats also for the expiations of sins that is if they have sinned through ignorance but on the seventh month which the macedonians call hyperberetaeus they make an addition to those already mentioned and sacrifice a bull a ram and seven lambs and a kid of the goats for sins on the tenth day of the same lunar month they fast till the evening and this day they sacrifice a bull and two rams and seven lambs and a kid of the goats for sins and besides this they bring two kids of the goats the one of which is sent alive out of the limits of the camp into the wilderness for the scapegoat and to be an expiation of the whole multitude but the other is brought into a place of great cleanness within the limits of the camp and is there burnt with its skin without any sort of cleansing with this goat was burnt a bull not brought by the people but by the high priest at his own charges which when it was slain he brought of the blood into the holy place together with the blood of the kid of the goats and sprinkled the ceiling with his finger seven times as also its pavement and again as often toward the most holy place for an expiation of sins and this is the accustomed solemnity of the hebrews when they pitch their tabernacles in the month of santhicus which is by us called nisan and is the beginning of our year on the fourteenth day of the lunar month when the sun is in aries for in this month it was that we were delivered from bondage under the egyptians the law ordained that we should every year for an expiation of sins and this is the accustomed solemnity of the hebrews when they pitch their tabernacles in the month of santhicus which is by us called nisan and is the beginning of our year on the fourteenth day of the lunar month when the sun is in aries for in this month it was that we were delivered from bondage under the egyptians the law ordained that we should every year slay that sacrifice which i before told you we slew when we came out of egypt and which was called the passover and so we do celebrate this passover in companies leaving nothing of what we sacrifice till the day following the feast of unleavened bread succeeds that of the passover 
and falls on the fifteenth day of the month and continues seven days wherein they feed on unleavened bread on every one of which days two bulls are killed and one ram and seven lambs now these lambs are entirely burnt besides the kid of the goats which is added to all the rest for sins for it is intended as a feast for the priest on every one of those days but on the second day of unleavened bread which is the sixteenth day of the month they first partake of the fruits of the earth for before that day they do not touch them and while they suppose it proper to honor god from whom they obtain this plentiful provision in the first place they offer the first fruits of their barley and that in the manner following they take a handful of the ears and dry them then beat them small and purge the barley from the bran they then bring one tenth deal to the altar to god and casting one handful of it upon the fire they leave the rest for the use of the priest and after this it is that they may publicly or privately reap their harvest they also at this participation of the first fruits of the earth sacrifice a lamb as a burnt offering when a week of weeks has passed over after this sacrifice which weeks contain forty and nine days on the fiftieth day which is pentecost but is called by the hebrews asartha which signifies pentecost they bring to god a loaf made of wheat flour of two tenth deals with leaven and for sacrifices they bring two lambs and when they have only presented them to god they are made ready for supper for the priests nor is it permitted to leave anything of them till the day following they also slay three bullocks for a burnt offering and two rams and fourteen lambs with two kids of the goats for sins nor is there any one of the festivals but in it they offer burnt offerings they also allow themselves to rest on every one of them accordingly the law prescribes in them all what kinds they are to sacrifice and how they are to rest entirely sacrifices in order to feast upon them however out of the common charges baked bread was set on the table of show bread without leaven of twenty-four tenth deals of flour for so much is spent upon this bread two heaps of these were baked they were baked the day before the sabbath but were brought into the holy place on the morning of the sabbath and set upon the holy table six on a heap one loaf still standing over against another where two golden cups full of frankincense were also set upon them and there they remained till another sabbath and then other loaves were brought in their stead while the loaves were given to the priests for their food and the frankincense was burnt in that sacred fire wherein all their offerings were burnt also and so other frankincense was set upon the loaves instead of what was there before the high priest also of his own charges offered a sacrifice of his own charges offered a sacrifice and that twice every day it was made of flour mingled with oil and gently baked by the fire the quantity was one tenth deal of flour he brought the half of it to the fire in the morning and the other half at night the account of these sacrifices i shall give more accurately hereafter but i think i have premised what for the present may be sufficient concerning them chapter eleven of the purifications moses took out the tribe of levi from communicating with the rest of the people and set them apart to be a holy tribe and purified them by water taken from perpetual springs and with such sacrifices as were usually offered to god on the like occasions he delivered to them also the tabernacle and the sacred vessels and the other curtains which were made for covering the tabernacle that they might minister under the conduct of the priests created to god he also determined concerning animals which of them might be used for food and which they were obliged to abstain from which matters when this work shall give me occasion shall be further explained and the causes shall be added by which he was moved to allot some of them to be our food and enjoined us to abstain from others however he entirely forbade us the use of blood for food and esteemed it to contain the soul and spirit he also forbade us to eat the flesh of an animal that died of itself as also the caul and the fat of goats and sheep and bulls 
he also ordered that those whose bodies were afflicted with leprosy and that had a gonorrhea should not come into the city nay he removed the women when they had their natural purgations till the seventh day after which he looked on them as pure and permitted them to come in again the law permits those also who have taken care of women after the same manner when this number of days is over but if any continued longer than that number of days in a state of pollution the law appointed the offering two lambs for a sacrifice the one of which they are to purge by fire and for the other the priests take it for themselves in the same manner do those sacrifice who have had the gonorrhea but he that sheds his seed in his sleep if he go down into cold water has the same privilege with those that have lawfully accompanied with their wives and for the lepers he suffered them not to come into the city at all nor to live with any others as if they were in effect dead persons but if any one had obtained by prayer to god the recovery of that distemper and had gained a healthful complexion again such a one returned thanks to god with several sorts of sacrifices concerning which we will speak hereafter whence one cannot but smile at those cannot but smile at those who say that moses was himself afflicted with the leprosy when he fled out of egypt and that he became the conductor of those who on that account left that country and led them into the land of canaan for had this been true moses would not have made this loss to his own dishonor which indeed it was more likely he would have opposed if others had endeavored to introduce them and this the rather because there are lepers in many nations who yet are in honor and not only free from reproach and avoidance but who have been great captains of armies and been entrusted with high offices in the commonwealth and have had the privilege of entering into holy places and temples so that nothing hindered but if either moses himself or the multitude that was with him had been liable to such a misfortune in the color of his skin he might have made laws about them for their credit and advantage and have laid no manality upon them accordingly it is a plain case that it is not a violent prejudice only that they report these things about us but moses was pure from any such distemper and lived with countrymen who were pure of it also and thence made the laws which concerned others that had the distemper he did this for the honour of god but as to these matters let every one consider them after what manner he pleases as to the women when they have borne a child moses forbade them to come into the temple or touch the sacrifices before forty days were over supposing it to be a boy but if she hath borne a girl the law is that she cannot be admitted before twice that number of days be over and when after the before-mentioned time appointed for them they perform their sacrifices the priests distribute them before god but if any one suspect that his wife has been guilty of adultery his wife has been guilty of adultery he was to bring a tenth deal of barley flour they then cast one handful to god and gave the rest of it to the priests for food one of the priests set the woman at the gates that are turned towards the temple and took the veil from her head and wrote the name of god on parchment and enjoined her to swear that she had not at all injured her husband and to wish that if she had violated her chastity her right thigh might be put out of joint that her belly might swell and that she might die thus but that if her husband by the violence of his affection and of the jealousy which arose from it had been rashly moved to this suspicion that she might bear a male child in the tenth month now when these oaths were over the priest wiped the name of god out of the parchment and wrung the water into a vial he also took some dust out of the temple if any happened to be there and put of it into the vial and gave it her to drink whereupon the woman if she were unjustly accused conceived with child and brought it to perfection in her womb but if she had broken her faith of wedlock to her husband and had sworn falsely before god she died in a reproachful manner her thigh fell off from her and her belly swelled with a dropsy and these are the ceremonies about sacrifices and about the purifications thereto belonging which moses provided for his countrymen he also prescribed the following laws to them. End of Book 3, Chapters 9-11
Recording by Shena Sir, Fresno, California.